Welcome to the first module of our course, Energy Management, Preparation to Certified Energy Manager Exam. In this first module, we will have an introduction to energy management, where we will explore what energy management is, why it's important, and how can you apply it in your organization. Let's start with a fundamental definition. What is energy management? Energy management is the efficient and effective use of energy to maximize profit, minimize costs, and enhance your competitive position. It's not just about cutting back, but about using energy wisely across all operations, from services to product design and shipment. This requires a whole systems viewpoint. So, what are the primary goals of energy management? There are several key objectives. Firstly, it's about reducing energy consumption and costs by improving energy efficiency and eliminating waste. Second, we want to minimize environmental impact by cutting greenhouse gas emissions. We need to establish robust monitoring, reporting, and management systems to track and optimize how we use energy. We also need to promote innovation by seeking new ways to improve our return on energy investment. It's crucial to foster a culture of energy awareness by engaging every employee in these conservation efforts. We must enhance our resilience by minimizing any disruptions from energy supply issues. And finally, optimizing power usage by reducing real power and subsequently apparent power is another key objective. Effective energy management looks at a very broad range of activities. It includes process optimization. This means evaluating and improving industrial processes to reduce energy consumption. Equipment efficiency. This involves upgrading to energy efficient equipment like motors, lightning, and HVAC systems. Building management systems. That's implementing automated control systems for better energy management in our buildings. Heat recovery and integration. It's about reusing waste heat to reduce overall energy demand. And also about promoting behavioral changes to encourage energy conscious practices. It's crucial to understand that energy management is not one time fix. It's an ongoing journey. It follows a cycle of continuous improvement, which involves planning, defining clear objectives and strategies, implementation, putting energy saving measures into action, monitoring, tracking energy use and performance by gathering data from meters and plant historians, analysis, identifying areas for improvement, adjustment, refining strategies and implementing further improvements based on the analysis. Next, let's make an important distinction. Energy conservation versus energy efficiency. Energy conservation. It means reducing energy consumption through behavioral changes like turning off lights when not needed. Energy efficiency. It means using less energy to perform the same task by improving technology and processes, such as switching to LED lighting. Effective energy management use both of these strategies. To implement energy management effectively, we use a variety of tools, such as energy audits. These are assessments to identify opportunities for savings. Monitoring, targeting, and reporting. We use this to set targets and track energy performance. Benchmarking. This involves comparing energy performance against industry standards. Process flow diagrams, PFD or PFD reviews. This helps in identifying energy saving opportunities through systematic analysis. Bench analysis. This optimizes heat recovery in industrial processes. Data management systems. Databases are used to track and analyze energy data. Energy management system. 
Here, we use frameworks such as ISO or ISO 50001 standard in order to help setting up energy management policies. Building automation system. These systems implement controls for improving building energy use. Variable frequency drive, VFDs, used to adjust motor speeds to optimize energy consumption. Speaking of data, remember that accurate data is essential for energy management. It involves collecting data from sources like plant historians and meters, ensuring data is reliable and accurate, using data to identify trends and make informed decisions, and reconciling data to make sure there is consistency. Finally, and very importantly, personal involvement is key for a successful program. This includes training to build awareness and skills, clear communication so that everyone understands our energy goals and strategies, motivation to encourage participation and reinforce commitment. In conclusion, energy management is a critical practice for any organization that wants to reduce costs, enhance competitiveness, and promote sustainability by using a systematic approach that combines efficiency with other conservations, organizations can achieve substantial economic and environmental benefits. Now, we will discuss the vital role of energy manager. This is a multifaceted position requiring a blend of technical expertise, communication competency, and leadership qualities. At its core, the energy manager is the champion of energy efficiency within an organization. Their responsibilities are varied and essential. First and foremost, the energy manager is responsible for program development and implementation. This means they must identify opportunities for energy savings, scope out potential projects, and then oversee the actual implementation of those projects. They ensure the program is sustainable, effective, and aligns with the organization's broader goals. Another key function is data management and analysis. They need to collect data from sources like plant historians and meters. The energy manager analyzes this data to understand energy consumption, identify waste, and then track the effectiveness of the energy saving projects. They also establish the systems for tracking energy usage and costs. This includes ensuring data quality and reconciliation. They establish and oversee energy accounting systems to monitor energy use and costs. Communication and advocacy are also a big part of the rule. The energy manager must be able to clearly articulate the value of energy management to a wide range of stakeholders, including management and employees. They must be able to present information, persuade others to take action, and build enthusiasm for energy efficiency improvements. They need to foster a culture of energy awareness and collaborate with different departments. While they may not always be hands-on, technical expertise is still required. The energy manager needs a firm grasp of process flows, various energy using equipment, and different energy saving technologies. They often need to assess the performance of systems, such as furnaces and boilers. They need to understand and interpret energy bills and know where to find information. Energy manager must also be skillful at resource management. This means ensuring that energy saving projects have the necessary budget and personnel. They must often influence others to get these resources because they might not have direct authority over these areas. Goal settings and monitoring are essential duties. The energy manager sets measurable goals for energy reduction and then monitors progress using metrics and key performance indicators or KPIs. 
they create action plans with clear timelines and specific activities. Finally, there is continuous improvement. Energy management is not a one-time task. So, the energy manager is always looking for ways to further improve energy performance. This includes gathering data, analyzing trends, adjusting strategies, and researching new solutions. They facilitate this by encouraging planning, evaluation, measurement, and tracking. In summary, the energy manager is a key figure in driving energy efficiency within an organization. They must effectively lead and influence others, manage resources well, and implement strategies to achieve long-term energy savings. They should also be prepared to mentor and guide others in their organization. They should be able to adapt their approach to different audiences. The energy manager must also be responsible for external reporting on energy performance. Keep in mind, the specific responsibilities can vary. In larger companies, the rule might involve overseeing team of energy specialists, while in smaller organizations, the energy manager may handle more diverse duties related to energy management. In this section, we will cover essential energy terminologies and units that energy manager must understand. A solid grasp of these concepts is crucial for effective energy management. First, let's start by defining energy. Energy is fundamentally the ability to do work. Energy could be quantified in different units. One of these units is Joule. One joule is equal to one watt second, and a kilojoule is 1,000 joules. For context, one kilojoule is roughly the energy in one burning kitchen match head. Now, let's look at other common units and convergence that energy manager will encounter. Kilowatt hour. This is a common unit, particularly for electrical energy. One kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 megajoules. Megajoules, one megajoule is equal to 1,000 kilojoule. Gigajoule, one gigajoule is equal to 1 million kilojoule. It's important to know that energy content of common fuels. Here are some examples. One liter of gasoline contains about 35 megajoule. One cubic meter of natural gas contains about 37 megajoule. One kg of propane contains 45.65 megajoule. One cubic meter of propane contains 25.5 gigajoule. One ton of hard coal contains 25 gigajoule. One barrel of crude oil contains 5.8 gigajoule. When we talk about electrical energy, it's often measured in kilowatt hours. However, it's crucial to remember that the actual energy content of one kilowatt hour of electricity is 3.6 megajoule, while it typically requires about 10 megajoule of primary fuel to produce one kilowatt hour of electrical energy due to thermal losses in the generation process. Also, additional losses occur in the transmission of electrical energy. Next, let's define power. Power is the rate at which energy is used. It's measured in watts or kilowatts, where one kilowatt equals to 1,000 watt. In electrical systems, power is measured in kilowatt, while energy is measured in kilowatt hour. It's important to note that energy is the integral of power over time. Utilities determine billing by calculating the average peak power over a short period of time. This determines the demand on the system and the utility may charge a higher rate based on this demand. Other important electrical terms include apparent power measured in kilovolt amperes, which is the vector sum of the magnetizing current and the power producing current. 
reactive power measured in kilovolt ampere reactive, which is the power that magnetizes the motor windings and helps the motor start and develop running torque. Power factor, which is the ratio of real power to apparent power. For DC power systems, the power factor is always 1 or 100%. Lastly, let's define enthalpy. Enthalpy is the total heat of air or water, including both sensible heat and latent heat. Enthalpy is measured in kilojoule per kg of air or water. As an energy manager, familiarity with these terms and units is not just helpful, it's essential. It allows for accurate analysis of energy consumption, identification of savings opportunities, and effective communication with the stakeholders. Being able to convert between these units allows for effective comparison of energy use and cost. This concludes our review of key energy terminologies and units. The next segment, we will build on these fundamental concepts.